Have you ever wondered how one of these even works? When a well no longer has the ability to flow on its own, you have to install some sort of artificial lift system. Yes. Now this pump jack converts the rotary motion of the motor to drive the vertical reciprocating motion of the polish rod, which you see hanging right there. It's that black line right there. And that runs the pump. This pump in this well, let's say it's 9,500 feet in the bottom of a well. That's nearly two miles. And that pump works pretty much just like a bicycle pump. Yeah, except the fluid comes out of the top of the pump instead of the air coming out the bottom of the pump. And this is the inside of the pump when it's working. The pump goes down, the bottom ball seats. When the pump goes back up, the bottom ball comes up and allows fluid to come up into the pump. And how do you connect the pump jack on the ground to the pump 9,500 feet below ground? With a whole bunch of these rods that are 25 feet long, range from three quarter to one inch in size. If you get fiberglass rods, they can be a little bit larger. But these rods are small. They're like this big. And you have to understand something. Over the course of a year, this pump jack will go up and down three to four million times. And what that means is you have hundreds of these little tiny rods moving through this well millions of times a year. And they are exposed to all of the stress of being lifted and lifting the entire fl uh, fluid column in the well and also being dropped. And when something is dropped, it has strain on it, it buckles, all kinds of problems. They're also exposed to a lot of corrosion. So you see these red things right here going around and round? Those are giant counterweights. And when the weights are on that side, they're preventing the pump jack from falling too fast. By countering the weight of the rods in the well, which weighs six or seven tons. And when the weights are on the left side of your screen, they are assisting the pump jack to lift those rods that weigh six or seven tons. Now back here at the back of the pump jack, you will find the motor. This might be an electric engine, or it could be a gas powered engine that's actually run by the gas produced by the well itself. Now, all of this may look very simple, but it's actually somewhat of an engineering marvel. You have to understand, there's no such thing as a straight well. They're all deviated and curved. And all of these tiny rods are exposed to extreme heat and pressure. And you have to understand, these rods have tensile strengths ranging anywhere from 50 to well over 100,000 pounds of weight. And it's experiencing that weight being pulled against it and pushed against it millions of times in a single year. So we use scientific modeling to determine how to put the rods in the well. You, you'll have a tape, what's called a tapered string. You'll have some one inch size rods on top, maybe some seven eighths in the middle and some three quarter inch rods on the bottom. And some of these rods have these guides on them, and these guides prevent the steel from the rod from rubbing against the steel in the pipe in the well, which can either wear a hole in the pipe in the well or snap the rod in half. You typically install your rod guides in areas of the well where you have a lot of deviation, basically where it's not that straight. There are hundreds of thousands of these wells across the United States, and the majority of them produce about 10 barrels of oil a day. So what does that mean? On a 10 barrel a day well, every time this goes up and down, it produces 0 0.05 gallons of oil. Probably not as much as you thought, huh? No. But if you do that 3 million times over the course of a year, you end up with 10 barrels of oil a day or 3,650 barrels of oil a year. And if you can keep that well running without spending too much money, that's a nice little profit. Thanks.